we are back for the qualification match. And as you guessed it, it's Jeff DeLuna. Take four. Take number four. Jeff DeLuna versus Ruslan Chinnikov. The winner of this match advances to stage two. The loser goes 0 for 4 in qualifiers. Jeff DeLuna, we have seen for the last three days, make it to this very same spot, only to be overcome by his opponent, finishing one spot out each day. This is a single elimination nine ball format. We are playing races to five, alternating breaks on diamond nine foot tables. These beautiful tables are wrapped in green Andy 988 cloth. And we are coming to you live from Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas. My name is Ben Sutherland, and I'm joined by the infamous box office Carl Boyce. Cheers, Benji. It is a pleasure, my friend. So at last, Ruslan has decided to show up and get himself deep in one of these qualifiers. He hasn't had an extremely impressive last three days. He's got an opportunity now to make up for it. I know Jeff Delina's going to be doing absolutely everything he can to not let Ruslan through. I will give a slight apology ahead of time if we hear some background noise. This building is filling up very quickly. Lots of players, lots of spectators, friends and family. This is an amazing event. Stage two starts tomorrow at noon. That will be a four-day event, 64 players, 16 of which have qualified over the last four days. The other 48 selected by the WPA and their member federations. Jeffrey DeLuna has won the lag against Ruslan, so he will be breaking in rack one. He will also have the break should this match go hill-hill. See some of our sponsors across the top of your screen. We will talk about them and give them some more praise throughout the match. But for now, let's watch Mr. DeLuna tear apart rack number one. One of the hardest breakers on the planet. When he wants to. There we go. Both feet off the ground. Look at the balls. Three They're balls in the hole. He should break like that all the time. I mean, lost the cue ball a little bit, but when you make a third of the rack, you clear out a lot of possible traffic. Jeff wasting no time. That's a useful nudge on the nine. Helps being left-handed in this uh, instance. I was just talking to Mr. John Mora from Canada then. Mr. Smooth. Yeah, and it's been a while since I've seen him, so we were having a catch up. And we were talking about the fact that he's changed playing from right handed to left handed. And still playing world class. That's pretty strong, though. That is amazing. I think if John Mora could take down a big major tournament with a world-class field. That might be the greatest achievement ever in pool. To do it right and left-handed. Well, to play right-handed all your life and then just swap to your left, it is scary, that. Jeff overran his position a little here. He's got a steep cut on the five, but I think it'll put him perfect on the six. But, uh, he's a little low, but I still fancy his chances from here. Nice cut on the three, takes the cue ball in a natural three rail path. Four position on the eight. So he gets off to the ideal start. Cue ball just coming 
perfect for this easy nine ball. Just like that, Jeff DeLuna breaks and runs rack number one, making an early statement to Ruslan. July 22nd through July 26th at the Rio Hotel and Casino, right alongside the USA Pool League and BCA Pool League Championships, we have the Predator World 10 Ball Championship. There is $100,000 added to this prize fund. For more information on this event, check out world10ball.com or playcsipool.com slash events for a full list of all of our upcoming coming tournaments and leagues. We also have a qualifier event that will be held here at Griff's on April 27th. That's only a $35 entry fee. April 27th, pay your 35 bucks and try to win yourself a spot into that $100,000 added Predator World 10 Ball Championships. Ruslan, electing for the cup break. It's always can be quite useful because one ball often ends up on this side of the table where it is. This looks a thin one though. It's very makeable, don't get me wrong. Controls it well. Very nicely judged with the speed control there. Five ball to six ball at first glance can always cause you a few issues. So that's going to be a key area of the table. And he needs this to slow down. Yeah, just, just about all right. Switching hands, shooting left-handed for this shot. Folks, if you've never been in Ruslan's presence before. He's about six foot five. He's a tall man. Which can be a bit of an advantage for certain scenarios on the pool table. He can reach things that your average heighted player couldn't. So here we go. Five to six is the big shot in this rack. Couple of ways of playing this. Loads of extreme left, spinning cue ball round three. Or you can play, I think he thought he missed that, you know. Jumped up very quick. It's gone in and it's perfect. So good shot. Did exactly what you said there. Took the cue ball, loaded it up with the inside, took it around three rows. This is how Ruslan can play, very much a confidence player. That's a great look right there at the new nine ball. You can see that big, huge nine on the side of it. Pretty, pretty cool looking. So as expected, these two are playing phenomenal pool at the moment. Both have had a break and run. We are tied up at one apiece, race into five. And Jeff's gonna be breaking apart rack number three. Expect him to take his time racking. He doesn't just throw them out there. May 24th through June 1st. Also right here in this very building, Griff's. Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas. We've got the US Open Bank Pool, the US Open Straight Pool, and the US Open One Pocket Championships. We have an all-around bonus for those three events as well. You must enter all three events to be eligible for the all-around bonus, but should you win, you earn yourself a healthy $3,500 bonus and a spot in the World 10 Ball Championships. Second place runner-up will receive a $1,500 bonus. Jeff took a lot off of that break there. 
Yeah, I'm a bit baffled by that because the first break, he crunched them, potted a load of balls and cleared the table. So why would you change your break? This time he took quite a bit off of it and came up dry. Usually players change the break when they're having a bit of a nightmare on the break or they're losing. You're trying to look for something to change the game. So I'm not really sure why you would change it after a successful break, but he has done. Good news is Ruslan he's clearly snookered on the one. So he's got to play a push. Tricky push shot as well. Because if you push over to the left hand side of the table, sort of near corner pocket, you leave in a bank. So I do believe he's trying to push into a jump shot. Kind of half get that decision, but it's not easy. Jeffrey putting Ruslan straight back. And Ruslan will be trying to make this one. Two ball, not going to cause him too many issues if he makes the jump shot. You would think cue ball is going to stay up top end of table. Yeah, we are going to go airborne, folks. Love that, airborne. We are going airborne. I'm not too sure what Ruslan's like with the short cue. answer your question <laughs> two ball made that pocket a little bit bigger but he struck it very well pocketed the one yeah the two balls definitely his friend in this rack he's <laughs> helped the one ball go in and look where it's finished it's landed perfect it's a useful nudge do believe both lady players are still left in the tournament I believe they're playing against each other. Wow. <laughs> nice shot there. Spinning cue ball round off two rails. Had to make sure he didn't nudge the purple four. Ruslan's obviously won three matches to get to this point. So he's had table time, so he's got to be feeling good. Jeffrey will be under a little bit of strange pressure, to be fair, because can you imagine losing in four files? I mean, that's, that's pretty strong. That, that would be painful. I don't know if Jeffrey knows, but I do believe he's probably going to qualify anyway. He would, uh, he'd have to win this match to be guaranteed that spot. Well, at the minute, it's not looking too good because Ruslan looks in good stroke. Yeah, Ruslan's playing nearly perfect right now. So this nine ball, there you see a good look at Ruslan's cue action. Tall fella, uses a very long cue. Pulls the cue back real far back. Players like Chris Melling do that as well. Chris Melling has one of the biggest, if not the biggest, backstroke that I've seen in pool. July 17th through the 27th at the Rio Hotel and Casino, we have the BCA Pool League World Championships right alongside the USA Pool League national championships both events will be held at the rio hotel and casino here in las vegas about a mile and a half down the road that's july 17th through the 27th for more information on these events to sign yourself up or to sign your team up check out playbca.com 
playusapool.com or playcsipool.com slash events. Gabe the Bay Bowen still in today's qualifier. Gabe the Babe, huh? I like it. Gabe the Babe. All the big hitting pool players who will be playing in stage two have started to flock into Grish Billiards. Trying to get some practice on the tables once these qualifiers are over. Because tomorrow we're going straight into it. and pockets of ball, the, the one and the two crossed the headstring. The two did come back, but that's okay. He w was successful on executing a legal break shot. And he's got himself a wide open table and a golden opportunity to take a 3-1 lead over Mr. Jeffrey DeLuna. Pockets the one nicely. Came up a little short, I think, of ideal position for the side pocket. It will be an unbelievable story if Jeffrey can't convert this match into a win. You would think playing four final round matches, you would win one, wouldn't you? Yes. Especially at the level Jeffrey yeah. plays. That is strong, that is. But these remaining six balls look sat nicely for Ruslan. So other than something crazy, Jeffrey will be 3-1 down. And if Ruslan does manage to win this and DeLuna is unfortunate enough to lose in the same spot four days in a row, I just hope his Filipino buddies aren't too hard on him. <laughs> I would expect my my American friends to give me a hard time if I made it to the finals four times in a row but wasn't able to convert. The Siberian Express is in full effect right now. Looking unstoppable. Ruslan looks a different player. Can't imagine what Jeff's feeling inside right now. I think he's think, thinking, surely not four. Can't lose him four, surely. This event has been sponsored by Cyclop Pool Balls. These are the new Cyclop Hyperion Pool Balls. Diamond Billiard Products. How Tips. Andy 998 Billiard Cloth, excuse me, 988 Billiard Cloth. Master Billiard Chalk, Predator Q. Also, thank you to the Rio Hotel and Casino. And of course, CSI and the WPA themselves. Amongst others, but with their support and collaboration, we were able to bring this event the players and to the viewers to enjoy. Stage two of this event kicks off at noon Pacific tomorrow, 12 p.m. When these matches are finished for the evening, there will be a player meeting and then the draw will be done for tomorrow. On stage two, the main event will be a race to seven not a race to five. Another unique piece of uh, information about stage two is that it's a win by two format. There we go. So he's gone back to his first break. And look at Are you wow. kidding me? Wow. 
Are six, you kidding me? Six balls. Are you kidding me? You don't see that very often. Oh my gosh. Take note of where you was and what day it is and what time because that doesn't happen very often. Oh, that was ridiculous. Wow, look at this. Speechless. <laughs> he don't even smile either, he just gets down. Imagine, imagine going from the four to the eight to the nine and that being the only three balls you have to shoot in the rack because you broke and made six. That was the break of a lifetime right there. Definitely the break of the event. I'm just wondering if Ruslan will have a little smile to Jeffrey after he puts this easy nine ball. Wow, incredible. Nine balls down in four shots. <laughs> Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's smiling over there. He had a little laugh. I don't know how Ruslan feels about that. And I wonder how DeLuna feels about letting up on his second break shot now. The two break shots where he's really laid into them have been extremely successful and produced positive results. The one time he opted to break a little bit softer, he came up dry and wasn't able to win that rack. Wow, I'm glad we got that. That was awesome. Now, Ruslan, just six balls to beat. Cue ball's close. Cue ball's gone. Mm. This could be the break Mr. DeLuna has been waiting for. He can clear these, he'll tie the score line back up at three and he'll have a chance to break and put himself on the hill. If it wasn't exciting already, it just got a whole lot more exciting, folks. That's nine ball pool right there. You can crunch the break, come up at dry, and then the very next rack, you can crunch the break and pot six. That's crazy. It's quite funny watching it because they just all seem to disappear in no time, didn't they? Then all of a sudden, he's got three balls to pop. Does beg the question why on his second break, Ooh. he did like a soft break. I think if I could get the balls moving like Jeffrey DeLuna, I would always choose to break hard. I think if we could all duplicate what the look I just did. There'd be no question. We'd all be doing it. Well, I'd rather be potting three balls off the break. Than running seven or eight? Yes. He's done a good job of staying on the right side of each ball this rack. And there you've just cursed it. And then I do that. He's okay. Yeah, he should be all right. I mean, it's not ideal, but he should um, he should make this ball. Bam. We are tied up, folks. Six games down. We are split at three apiece. Jeff DeLuna is going to be breaking off here in rack number seven. We are racing to five. The loser will not make it on to stage two. The winner will. Both players have come up short the last four days. Jeff DeLuna with three heartbreak days in a row. Now has the opportunity to put himself on the hill first. August 10th through August 13th right here at Griff's. Two more US Opens to talk about. We have the US Open 10 ball championships and the US Open 8 ball championships. $10,000 being added to both events for a total of 20,000 added dollars. For information on that or to sign yourself up, check out playcsipool.com. Back to the action. Let's see if Mr. DeLuna can duplicate what he did two racks ago. I'm saying he can't. One of the best breaks I've seen in my life. I saw six balls go in and I kind of looked around the room to see if maybe Pagulayan saw that. 
There was a break uh, a few years back. Paggy Lyon made six. And uh, unfortunately, didn't get out. <laughs> so let's see here. This is exciting. Watch the action as well. Very loose. Pulls the cue arm right back. Body jumps straight into the cue ball. Bang. Nearly snaps the cue. Two have gone. Maybe three. I mean, it's a very effective break. You sacrifice cue ball control, but how many times do we see cue ball getting kicked anyway? So that wouldn't really bother me if I could hit him as hard as Jeffrey. I think he really wants to attack this. This is such a thin cut. He's got to hit it firm. There's no telling where that cue ball is going to stop. He does have a pretty good safety opportunity on offer. Should he elect to go that route? A couple of them. Wow. We're seeing a different DeLuna right now. Yeah, that was well judged. He's going to need another one. Oh, he's hitting the ball nice. He's just... Wow. He struck that beautifully, didn't he, Carl? Yeah, it was, like, effortless. I mean, he didn't even look like there was any effort there, but that was, like... He I just got the, uh, the spin to grip on the rail straight away, didn't he? He's feeling good right now. Good performance. Knowing if he loses, he might be brandished as the guy that's lost in four finals. He'll have to take some time away, avoid the Philippines, just to avoid. <laughs> Maybe this was his ploy, just to get extreme match practice. He's had more match practice than anybody else. angle here just pop the eight ball cue ball goes off top rail side rail nice and natural does this funny thing with his bridge jam doesn't he quite a lot after connecting the cue ball he sort of moves his bridge jam door or something we could see a good angle of that here oh, he kept it pretty still there so after being down three to one Jeff DeLuna claws his way back and gets to the hill before Ruslan Chinnikov. He's now leading by a score of four to three. Jeff needs one, Ruslan needs two. We are getting all we bargained for and more with this match, folks. And would you believe it? It's only gonna get better over the course of the next four days. Beautiful camera angle right there. You can see Ruslan making sure he gives himself a nice tight rack with those new Cyclop Hyperion pool balls. Kind of get a good look at the cue ball too. You can see it's a little different than your typical typical cue ball. It's got a rectangle and a circle on it. And of course we need to mention that beautiful break cue he's playing with. That's the new Predator BK Rush. Predator, one of our feature sponsors and the official cue of Q Sports International. Excellent camera work there. Let's see what Ruslan can do here, breaking off in rack number eight. I don't hear anything. No, he needs a random ball to fall, and it hasn't. And I think the one ball goes through the gap into that top left pocket. Two to the three, Carl. I believe that's the tricky one. Trickiest one. No? See something? I think if he can stop the cue ball around where he was pointing, he's probably just got enough angle. I 
almost what he's looking at. She needs the cue ball in a, in a pinpoint area where he can pop the two and just use short rail to come back up. Three ball goes in both top pockets, so. He struck that nicely. And he's hitting the ball really well right now. Maybe he just didn't have enough pressure over the last few days. Maybe he needed the heat. Saw that movement you were talking about right there, Carl, with that bridge hand after striking. Yeah, it's only on certain shots, like. Questionable shots, I think. Yeah. Regardless, he's handling it very nicely. Ruslan sitting off to the side, not even looking at the table. And he is delivering that cue so nicely. The only thing that can slightly go wrong is if doesn't get on this sick ball. But. And potting this five ball, cue ball's coming over. Below, right and middle. You would think he's gonna go off two rails. Like so. <laughs> Not so sure if the nine ball's causing him any issues or not. Nope. I think he can just top this through. Off the bottom rail and back up. That back leg almost wrapped around its body. Very uh, Bustamante-ish. It's a shrewd move, putting the extension on the cue because he's at full stretch. Oh. Extension up. and opposite handed. It's kind of milking this shot, I feel. It's an important shot. I think he knows if he makes this and gets that position, it's as good as over at that point. Can't, can't blame him for taking just a little extra time here. That is very awkward queuing for a person who isn't extremely tall. I think he knows. He's smiling. Yeah, a very animated character. These three balls, and he's finally done it on day four. <laughs> Good performance, though. Four finals is no mean feat. One thing for certain, come stage two, nobody's had more table time in Grish Billiards than Jeffrey DeLuna. And that's that, folks. Jeff DeLuna takes down Ruslan Shinnikov by a scoreline of five to three. DeLuna has earned himself a spot into stage two, which starts tomorrow at noon. My name is Ben Sutherland. I've been joined by Jason Kane and Carl Boyce. We will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have an excellent evening.